Okay, this is called the 20, uh, 24 inch support box. And um, after building the box around it to support it and screwing it to the, to the two by 12s, uh, code calls that it's at least two inches below the height of the ceiling. Okay, I went ahead and did it three inches because there's gonna be some drywall and I might do a little trim piece around there. Uh, but the hard part's done. Now it's just a process of connecting the triple wall pipe and running it through the roof. So this is the DuraVent DuraPlus pipe. They call it any fuel pipe. Um, triple wall pipe, that's what I have to have. I have to have UL listed pipe. Uh, exterior, inner lining, fiberglass or whatever the, it's probably not fiberglass, but whatever the insulation they, they use. And then the inner pipe. And this chimney pipe is good for any type of fuel. So now I've got to get this up through the roof and I have to have at least two inches of clearance all the way around it. Okay, so I used my marking pencil and a long stick and I put it against the edge of the chimney pipe and I tried to trace around the outside edge. You can kind of see the circle there. Not very well done, but it's good enough to give me a good indication of where to start. using a block of wood that's got it basically even as far as the distance is coming off the wall so now I'm gonna go up and put the roof jack on this definitely wasn't the best day to do this as you can see I'm pushing my strap up through that vent and the strap is tied off to a rafter. I didn't feel safe getting up there. The roof was still a little bit slick. I have my ladder strapped to the bucket in the backhoe, which is about four feet off the ground. Even with my running shoes on, it just was slick. It was scary.
it's a pretty simple process using a non-hardening silicone based sealant I got the roof jack down I will then put the storm collar around the top of the roof jack and that's really what makes it weather tight The storm color also requires a non-hardening sealant to be put around the top of that to ensure that no moisture is going to run down that chimney into the roof jack. The last thing that I didn't show was the mounting brackets that I installed ensuring that this doesn't blow around or move around. I need to get up there with some stainless sheet metal screws and put a couple of screws in, but other than that this thing's done. So code says the chimney is supposed to be two foot higher than a level point in which there's a 10 foot gap. That's hard to explain, but what I went ahead and did is I put it about two feet higher than the ridge, which should be more than sufficient. The way I installed this would not meet code because this is a homemade non-UL listed stove. It should have 24 inches. Uh, from the back of the stove to the wall. I just wanted to get a fire in it, get it burning, see how well it burned. I'll have to put a couple of 45s in the single wall to get it to meet code before I have it inspected. I've got all the windows open and when I first lit the fire it was 28 degrees inside, 26 out. I literally have all the windows open because it's burning some of the paint off and it's still almost 35 degrees in here. I need to close everything up once this clears out and really see how warm I can get it in here. Fire's been going for a good 45 minutes probably and this is finally just about too hot to the touch. I'm hoping that's how. About as hot as it's gonna get. I can feel it putting off a little bit of heat. Now code says I have to have a two inch gap around everything in there, uh, chimney pipe. So I'll build a, a box around that just to be safe. But it's putting off some heat up here, that's for sure. Just for fun, I set about three, four ounces of water on top of the stove to see how long it would take to boil it. It didn't take long at all. Most modern stoves have two layers to them and actually this one has two layers. The back side of it has a layer uh, that keeps part of the heat away so it's not as hot on the back side as it, in the, as it is on the top. Uh, the top is hot enough to cook food on. I can't see owning a stove that couldn't be something I could use to cook on if I absolutely had to. If something went bad, if, if whatever, we were snowed in and we didn't have propane, who knows. Uh, so the idea that this is hot enough to boil water makes me I feel like we could probably throw a, a pot of beans or a pressure cooker on there and, and make it work. So I think I might clean this stove up and use it. We'll see what the wife says, but uh, it's definitely putting off, putting off a bunch of heat. I could uh, curl up on a cot right here in front of this thing and go to sleep in no time.